microdosing testosterone. This is an incredible clinical case and opportunity for me to use a real man in the world who has been doing this, who has come forth and like to show us uh, all the details clinically of what's going on. He's a 57 year old man and he is going to be our feature case tonight. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on board tonight. Great to be here, Doc. Glad to help out. Thank you, sir. First off, I want to say that everything done tonight has been supervised as this man has his own private licensed physicians in America, and he's been cared for appropriately by physicians that have watched him very carefully. And all the medications he uses, including testosterone, are provided by licensed practitioners in the United States. This is not a usual man. This is not a usual man in that he's an, an excellent example of what it takes when you're on testosterone, how complicated and the vigilance and the attention to detail that's required. This is a 57 year old man and you're gonna be amazed to understand these details. So let's proceed forward. Sir, why did you start on testosterone and what age, how long? So I retired from the military after 28 years. Um, and after I retired, my health just started going downhill. I started feeling worse and worse and worse. And I, I kept consulting with my family physician, letting her know that, hey, something's wrong. Something's not right. I don't feel right. I was putting on weight. I had no energy. Things were just going wrong. So we went down all kinds of rabbit holes, sleep studies, uh, ended up on a CPAP. That helped a little bit, but it still didn't work. And uh, basically, she just kept saying, hey, your, your testosterone is in range at 300, so you're good. There's nothing wrong with you. And I kept telling her, well, there is something wrong because it's not feeling right. My theory is that when I was younger, I was a lot higher. And so when I got down in the 300s, I think my body just didn't like it. Um, and so I basically, after about three years of dealing with her, I finally chose to go out in town with a private clinic. And that's when I started uh, down the road. And that was at the age of uh, 53, 2018. Um, so, 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 okay, so thank you for that. That's an incredible case that guys don't have to be sub 300 or sub 250 when they have clinical symptoms. And the American College of Endocrinology and urology, other experts, they agree with this now. You don't have to be a number anymore. Okay, so so you said 53 and you're 57. Am I right? Yeah, it's been about four years. Maybe it was 52. Um, okay, so, so four years. So it's not been 30 years like me, but it's been your, your four years. And how do you feel? Great. Yeah, so I started on once a week. Um, once a week, uh, 200 milligrams, but that turned out to be too much. And they backed me down to around uh, 150. And uh, I was having a lot of side effects with uh, uh, high estrogen, high estradiol and uh, acne on my back. And so I went to twice a week and that minimized a little bit, and helped me manage the estradiol better. Um, and then finally I ended up at three times a week and at three times a week with the microdose, it completely eliminated my acne and my stradiol is steady and I'm able to control it a lot better. So I'm real happy with the three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I just do the injection before I go to work and it works great. HCG twice a week, also 250 IUs twice a week, HCG. I've been on HCG from the beginning. Um, so I maintain that. And so, and what's your dose three times a week, sir? 50 milligrams. Uh, but, but as you see in my labs, I usually try to stay around 1200 and I'm up a little higher. I think the HCG I got is a little stronger. So I'm going to back my dose down to 40 milligrams uh, three times a week and see where I fall out uh, next month when I do bloods. So 50 milligrams. So tell us, how do you break that down? What's the testosterone concentration and what's the little dose you're using? So 
the, the testosterone is uh, uh, 200 milligrams per milliliter. And so on, on the uh, 27 gauge insulin syringe, it's at the 25 mark. 25 mark will end up being 50 milligrams because one milligram, one milliliter, uh, one cc is 200 milligrams. So 50 would be 100 milligrams and 25 would be 50. So I'll back it down to the 20 mark uh, to get 40 milligrams. And I'll demonstrate how to draw and everything. Okay. Yeah. And I will say, I started out drawing with a 21 gauge and injecting with a 25. And uh, I ended up with these 27 gauge insulin pins. And these are just superior to everything as far as being able to draw and inject with the same needle they draw easily. The 28, 31 gauge take a lot longer to draw, but this 27 gauge, uh, you can draw one mil of tests in about one minute. So for me to pull that 0.25 takes 20 seconds and I can demonstrate that. Uh, they're really easy to draw. Okay, so let's go over your labs real quick. Thank you so much. I mean, that's very clear for why you started testosterone, how long you've been on testosterone, you started off with the classic 200 a week, which is for, for 95% of guys, it's too much. You know, it's too much. At our age, when you're in your, you know, mid thirties, forties and up, you want to be healthy. You want to be sustainable. You want to have great sex. You want to be strong and you don't need 200 a week flat out, just injecting into the ass or to the left. You don't need it. The levels are going to be all over way too much so micro dosing again he's micro dosing three times a week for me i i take the 0.5 every five to six days because i'm lazy i'm lazy i've been doing it for 30 years and i'm not saying you're a newbie but i'm just saying that do you have to micro dose guys and the truth is you don't but this is micro dosing the you key know, is the minimum efficacious dose right you want to find that minimum efficacious dose that's right. going to reduce your symptoms and make you feel better, right? So once once you feel better and you're hitting on all these cylinders, so basically I lost 30 pounds from when I first started, and you know I, I lift weights three times a week, I do cardio you know steadily, so my health you know I'm optimizing every single facet of my health, uh, and I probably would not have been to this point had I not started TRT. It's made that much of a difference in my life. And I know there's a lot of guys out there that you know, need to, but you know they're not getting the proper guidance. So I'm happy to help the app any way I can. Thank you so much, sir. We, we really appreciate that because again, this is the fine, the fine tuned details, not just taking 200 every week. And you know, with, with AIs, with HCG, this is the fine details. Let's look at the lab. So I wanna move through pretty quick here. So the salient points are that you're a 57 year old man, we're the same age, right? You're actually, I think, a month older. And your red blood cells, your hemoglobin 16, hematocrit's 47.4. We know that you've done iron studies, but I don't see them here. And these labs are labs that were done in May. So I know that you're on top of your game and you check labs regularly, which is awesome. So you get in what you get out, guys, you know, or excuse me, you get out what you put in. You know, it really is true. So it looks like, you know, your CBC is perfect, of course, on paper here. How often do you phlebotomize? I was, when I first started out, I was doing it quarterly and my ferritin got low. So now I'm doing it about twice a year, about every six months. So, yeah, so guys, you gotta understand everyone has different genes so when you look at the CBC, you need to correlate with the iron studies. Remember the ABCDs? So this is D for deposition disease. Now, this man is lucky that at his age, with everything else he has going on, genetically and the dose of testosterone, he's not, he's able to give blood only twice a year. Some men need to give it more. Some men don't give blood at all. And you need to look at the CBC, and the iron studies with the ferritin. So let's keep going. Your comprehensive metabolic panel, your glucose is super tight. You're not pre-diabetic. 
Good job. How much do you weigh, sir? 179 pounds. How tall? 68 inches, five foot eight. Excellent. You look good and I love the shirt, sir. Thank you for wearing that shirt tonight. I do appreciate that shirt. You look, you look adorable. So your, your kidney function, the electrolytes are perfect. It's interesting that your ALT is high and that's probably for muscle spillover as we discussed, but it could also be classically from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but you don't drink excessively. I don't drink at all. You don't drink at all. You don't do any drugs. You have no history of hepatitis. Guys, this is, I can't tell you how important the health history is. So this is something that's gonna be from muscle spillover and we know that. So your lipid panel, sir, you have a calcium score of zero. So guys, he checked his calcium score. He has, at his age, that this is more just good luck, right? I mean, you've lived a healthy life. You haven't smoked cigarettes. I used to smoke 10 years ago. So he quit smoking and he's, he was overweight and he still has a calcium score of zero. You know what that is called, sir? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you have good genes. But indeed, guys, his cholesterol, his LDL is 90. For some people, that's going to be too high because if they have plaque in the artery, you're going to want to drive the LDL under 70. But again, this man has a nice, robust HDL 47. Total cholesterol is 149. Are you on cholesterol medicine, sir? Yes, it's uh, Crestor 10 milligrams every other day. So guys, listen to that. Alternative, to, this is a great case. I know it's a microdosing. This is a microdosing case, but I have to tease people out with the details because this is why you're microdosing to stay yeah. healthy. It's about deploying uh, reasonable countermeasures to the side effects. So and wait a minute. Employ, say it again, sir. Deploy reasonable countermeasures to the side effects. Reasonable countermeasures to the side effects. I love that, sir. The low sartan blood pressure. 50 milligrams, and then 10 milligrams of Crestor, and then four grams of Vesipa uh, daily for my cholesterol management. Anything else, metformin? No, I haven't done metformin yet. Uh, I'm on the fence about that. We're gonna, one piece at a time, sir. You're, you're ahead of the, you, this man is ahead of the curve. But this is about microdosing, but I wanna tease that out for you guys. Your PSA is usually under one, it's 1 1.2 here. You do get annual digital rectal exams every year. You've had a colonoscopy at the age of 45 to 50. I'm, I'm due, uh, due for colonoscopy. I'll be doing that in the next couple of months. And you're gonna get skin exams. Sure. Very good. See guys, listen, head to toe. Uh, physically. And, right, now his testosterone here, his total testosterone is 1327 and the estradiol is 23.9, it's perfect. Are you using the Romanase inhibitors? Tiny bit of an astrazole once a week, um, maybe less than 0.25. Wow, less than 0.25, that's essentially zero. Very difficult to split the little tiny pills. This is an example, and your free testosterone is 21.7 on the scale of 7.2 to 24 picograms per milliliters. So your free testosterone, sir, is perfect. So be, you, you don't have to lower it that much. So you're doing a great job. I feel best at the upper end. So, Sir, your free testosterone is where the money is. The total testosterone can be reflective of, an excess, of an, a higher sex hormone binding globulin. We don't look at totals. We look more at the biologic and the free, as you know. So, all right, sir, let's move into the technical aspects of microdosing. Can you tell us again, what's your dose of testosterone? So 50 milligrams, three times a week. So, I use so we're taking, yeah, so you're taking 200 milligrams per milliliter. And show us now, go ahead and show us exactly what you do. Okay, so on the vial, safe and sterile injections are critical. So you wanna clean the top of the vial carefully with the alcohol and you should, have 100 packs of alcohol pads on hand because you got to clean your injection site and clean your vial. So once you clean the vial, <clears throat> make sure we can see this. Inject a tad bit of air into the vial and then I pull it back. 
and uh, it should just start pouring in. You see, so there's 10. Twenty. There's about thirty, so now I'll uh, I'll push the air out and get down to exactly the twenty-five mark. And so that's that's my dose right there. If you can see the wow. numbers, I don't know if it's focusing. Wow. So there we are, and then I'll cap the uh, syringe until I'm ready to inject. Now, if the syringe touches anything, you know I'll discard it and get another one. So it's. You know, keep the vial sterile with the sterilizing with the alcohol pad, then use a sterile needle and, you know, don't, I don't contact, let it contact anything until I'm ready to inject. And uh, I can demonstrate the injection if you like uh, in the Dell. Why, why don't you go ahead, sir? Please, please go ahead. This is going to be very yeah, so. <clears throat> Stripping down, folks. He's stripping down. Yeah. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Good. So, of course, you know, you want to clean the injection site carefully with the alcohol. And another tip is to let the alcohol dry a um, little bit, because if you inject right into the wet alcohol, it's going to stink. And then, you know, I just kind of do a firm, Firm injection. If you go slow, it, it, it'd be more painful. If you just do a firm injection and then just very, very slowly, you know, if you inject it quickly, you can get pip, pain, post injection pain. So very slowly inject it and then you're done. Shouldn't bleed. Uh, you know, there should be nothing there. Piece of cake. So that, that's a 27 gauge. Yes, sir. So I think, guys, I think Harrison, oh, sorry, let me see. Uh, here's a 21. So here's so your, your, your cam, the cam, you have the camera. Yeah, yeah. So here's the 27 compared to the 20. <laughs> Gosh, and you know, a lot of doctors prescribe these big syringes and it's just unnecessary pain. Uh, so, so that's a, so I think, I agree with you. I think that if you're gonna microdose, the 27 gauge both draws and injects all in one. Right, and the insulin uh, pens are designed to uh, draw and inject. Diabetics don't backload or do anything, uh, you know, with these insulin needles. My wife was a diabetic for 30 years, for her whole life, basically. And so I watched her draw and inject, you know, for 25 years and, and uh, never a problem. Some people say that the rubber doles, uh, but doles the needle, but I don't believe that's true. And I actually looked at it under a microscope and there was no damage to the needle whatsoever. Right. I agree with this. It's I agree. if you do it multiple, multiple times, it's so small. So let me ask you this. And as we close this great presentation and clinical example, you want to do the HCG also? The HCG, you could we can hold off on the HCG. I want to really show these guys microdosing because this is going to be so powerful. What, what, what do you think you can keep this going? So how long can you keep this going? I will do this for the rest of my life. Uh, okay. this for life it's a commitment for life i i don't see myself coming off unless i get some you know prostate cancer or some something goes seriously wrong you know uh, i can't see myself coming off can, let, me ask, let me ask you a question can, can you how do you travel what do you is this what is it like is it a nuisance i mean how do you do this i haven't traveled uh honestly since i've been on but i've got a diabetic travel pack and i'll just put that in there uh, with the freezer pack and I'll just take it right along. Uh, I understand it's easy in your carry on luggage. Uh, they, they don't bat an eye. TSA doesn't usually bat an eye because they see a uh, diabetic supplies going through all the time. And right. I'll just make sure that I have my prescription in, in there to where anybody has a question, you know, they know it's not steroids or something like that. It's just, it's a prescription medication. Yeah. Well, one of the things we get all the time in, in, in the office is, 
How do I travel with testosterone? Well, keep it in the box with the prescription. Don't take it out of the box, you know, because you could take it out of the box where it's just, it's going to be, it, right. it's going to be potentially an illegal, illicit steroid then. So you got to keep it in the box. And TSA, by the way, guys, TSA has bigger fish to fry. Take it in your walk on. They're looking for guns, they're looking for bombs, they're looking for people smuggling heavy, a significant amount of drugs. I take care of a lot of TSA guys. And they, they've told me this, that if you have a small amount of personal medicines in your walk on, they don't care. They don't, they're not gonna, they're gonna keep moving. They're looking for dangerous and excessive amounts of drugs, like smuggling uh, types. And these guys are super smart. They, they, they know what they're doing. So, sir, I wanna thank you so much. This has been a great presentation and I really appreciate it. And I really wanna get comments, guys. Come on, this is microdosing. You don't have to microdose. You could take it once a week. I don't, I think every two weeks is excessive. If your doctor is doing it every two weeks, even if you're taking 200 once a week, it's probably cringy, it's too much. But if, if you just say, you know what, doc, I just wanna take it once a week, I get it. But look at this man, look at his labs. He's willing to do this and it takes this type of vigilance and attention to detail, but look at his labs, look at his health and look at his quality of life. So thank you so much, sir. Glad to help, Doc. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. Let's get some great comments, guys. Thank you.